It's probably not real hard to figure out the opposite of love. What, what do you think that would be? Hate, Hate yeah. Do um, you remember what we said last week was the opposite of joy? Happiness. Happiness, well, <laughs> that's a perversion. It was grief. Um, and several, several scriptures where Jesus used that, that contrast. And uh, tonight we're looking at peace. You know, when I, when I think about these, particularly these first three, I mean, this is just what people want. You know, that's, that's what people in the world want, love, joy, and peace. And uh, the problem many times is they don't know what they mean. They wouldn't know if they had it if they found it. Uh, but they, they often just have a, a wrong thing they're looking for to, to try and fulfill it. And uh, we'll see some things about peace tonight. One of the, God's names is peace. Um, in, he's called the God of peace in for instance, Romans 15, 33, where it says, Now the God of peace uh, be with you all. And in uh, Romans 16, 20, The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. So uh, a, a name of the Lord, Jehovah Shalom, is, uh, is peace. Isaiah called Jesus the Prince of Peace. In uh, Romans 10, 15, uh, God's message is called the Gospel of Peace. Uh, so... Uh, peace has a lot to do with, with God. Uh, there's two basic aspects. One is peace with God. Um, we're born at enmity with God. That, that's the, the con, one of the main conflicts in life we have. And the Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God, Romans 5.1. And uh, so salvation is when we surrender, the unconditional surrender. We say, Lord, you win. The other part of peace between us and God is the peace of God. In uh, Philippians, he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh, as Christians, we not only have peace with God, we can have the peace, we do have the peace of God. Whether we live it or, or not is, I guess, up to us. Now, we're going to look at three things tonight. You can see on your notes there what peace isn't, what it is, and uh, some of the things we can do about or, or with peace. Uh, I mentioned, or did I mention, uh, the opposite of peace is fear or being troubled. i give you a couple of verses on that. Uh, Jeremiah 30 and verse 5 God says, Thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. So trembling and fear are the, are the opposite. The, the other verse I'd give you is John uh, 14, verse 27. It'd be a pretty, pretty familiar verse. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So being troubled, being afraid is the opposite of peace. And we've all experienced that. You know, troubled in mind, troubled in spirit. And the problem is that false peace is so common that quite often that's actually what people are seeking. They're not seeking real peace. They're seeking a false peace. Now, let me give you three. There's probably many more that smarter people than me can figure out, but uh, one is the idea of, that peace is the absence of trouble. That, that's a, probably the, one of the most common ideas. Peace is just the absence of trouble. Um, there's a real interesting verse in Daniel 8, verse 25. Uh, it's actually about the Antichrist. Now, with these verses, you can just, just listen. It, it's, or you can turn there if you want. But Daniel 8, 25, like I said, it's talking about the Antichrist. And he says, he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. Isn't that an interesting statement? And by peace shall destroy many. Um, you, you know, there, there's people who, because there's no trouble, um, they have no character. You, you, you've heard of people where they grow up rich and so on, and they just end up being empty, empty people, never had to strive for anything, and, and so on. Um, sometimes people compromise what's right to avoid fighting. Yeah, and they, they think that's peace, you know. Oh, I just, I just won't fight. Um, 
Absence of trouble is not necessarily peace. As well, some people think of peace as getting our own way. You know, if, if I get my way, that's it's my way or the highway. And as long as I get my way, we've, we've got peace. But uh, that's, that's not necessarily true either. Uh, Jeremiah said in uh, Jeremiah 6, verse 14, it's an interesting thing to do is just go uh, get a list of all the word, words peace in the Bible. Uh, Blue letter Bible, really easy to do. I, I read them all this week. Uh, there's, there's quite a few. Jeremiah 6, verse 14. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. You know, just because we say peace <laughs> doesn't mean we, we really have it. Um, you know, just, uh, just uh, pretending doesn't, doesn't make it true. Um, later on in that same chapter, God says, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. He says, that's, that's the real way of peace, is going God's way. You know, go, go the old way, of God's way. Uh, another way some people try and find peace, not only absence of trouble, and getting our own way, and uh, just pretending, uh, is just to ignore reality. Some people can uh, feel like there's peace, you know, the old idea, she'll be right, mate, kind of thing. Whether, whether there is peace or not, just because they, they don't live in a, in a real world. Let me read you a verse from Deuteronomy 29, verse 19. Deuteronomy 29, verse 19. He's been telling them the curse that's involved when we don't obey the Lord for Israel. That we... He has parts where he says, there'll be these blessings, there'll be these curses. And he says, it shall come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, that he shall bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, the Bible says. Yeah, we can pretend there's peace. We can say, oh, I'm going to have peace. Doesn't matter. Um, it, and he even mentions you know, drugs and alcohol will, will help people to pretend that, that there's peace, but it doesn't make it real. And unfortunately, many people are seeking uh, one or, or more of these, thinking that will bring them peace. Some people go from place to place, trying to get away from all the people that make their life so unhappy, but they always go with themselves, and uh, that's the problem. Uh, peace is the opposite of, of fear and, and trouble. Well, let's look at some of these verses that, that the Lord gives us some... Uh, Oh, maybe some scope and definition of, of peace. The first one's Matthew 11, verse 28. Now, this verse doesn't actually mention the word peace, but I think it is a description of, of God's rest. It's a famous portion of Scripture. Take my yoke upon, upon you and learn of me. Matthew 11:28 28 is the, is the verse before it. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I would say, first of all, peace is rest. Peace is rest. Now, he's not saying that there's no labor because he's talking about a yoke. <laughs> a yoke is what you put on working oxen. Um, and he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's a, a song, I don't know if it's in our, our hymnal, uh, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord, O troubled soul, rest in the arms of his care. Whatever thy lot, it mattereth not, for nothing can trouble thee there. Trust in the Lord, O troubled soul. You know, resting in the Lord. Uh, even when, you know, there's work to do, we, we rest in him. We trust him. And, and that comes from Jesus, this, this rest. Um, in 1 Peter 5, 5, 7, he wrote, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's the kind of rest we're talking about. We'll have cares, we'll have work, but we give the burden to, to the Lord. Secondly, peace is not being afraid. We read that in John 14, 27 already, but I'll read it again. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, 
My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace is not being afraid. Now, that comes from Jesus. Second uh, Timothy 1, 7, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There's no fear in love, he says in, in 1 John. Peace is rest, peace is not being afraid. All, all of these work together for us to understand peace. Uh, John 16, 33. I was, I was interested to note the word peace in the New Testament hardly in Matthew at all. But Luke and John have it quite a bit. I've, I found that interesting. I I'm not making any, surmising anything from that, but um, just the, the word was, I think, mostly in, in Luke. But uh, John 16, 33, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So he's saying there, peace is not the absence of trouble. You know, peace is cheer in the midst of trouble. <laughs> and that, that comes from Jesus. There's several illustrations of this in the Gospels where, uh, you know, the people, the disciples would be in a fearful situation and Jesus would come up and say, be of good cheer, it's I, be not afraid. <laughs> uh, one time they were, they were out on the, the water and, and uh, you know, Jesus walked on the water and Jesus walking on the water scared them probably as much as, as anything. And uh, when they saw him, they were troubled and immediately he talked with them and said to them, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Uh, so peace is cheer in the midst of, of trouble. Paul had a similar thing when uh, he was arrested in Acts chapter 23 and the Bible says an angel appeared to him and said, peace, be of good cheer. Uh, John 20 verse 21, I think we can say peace is purpose in life. John 20, 21, again, it's a very well-known verse. It's when Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Now, I would put those phrases as, as one, one thought. And he's saying, you know, peace, you've got a purpose. You've got a job to do. Uh, peace is, part of it is purpose in life. And that comes from Jesus. God is the one who gives us purpose. A similar thing would be that peace is direction in life. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. It's uh, when the churches had been persecuted and uh, then uh, some, things, some things happened with uh, uh, Saul, Paul getting saved and so on and Verse 31, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So they had rest. They, they, had, they had direction. The Holy Ghost was, was directing them and, and uh, giving them peace. They were walking in the, in the fear of the Lord. I don't know if you've ever had a circumstance where, like for me, you're usually driving and you you hope you're on the right road but you're not sure you're on the right road and you're going further and further and and you get this awful feeling um oh, is this the right way <laughs> um and in our christian life it can be like that if you're doing this you're doing that uh, am i doing the right thing the the peace we need comes from the lord as we see you know as he directs us as his holy spirit uh, shows us the way um so peace isn't getting our own way or absence of trouble or just ignoring reality or just saying peace. Um, peace has, has a lot of uh, aspects to it. It's rest, it's not being afraid, it's cheer in the midst of trouble, it's purpose in life, it's direction in life. And the key is that it comes from God. And we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, these are things we can have. Uh, Probably each one of us, in our own way, goes through trouble. But God can give us peace in the midst of the storm. And uh, that, that's a really important thing to see. 
it seemed to me as I looked at this subject that peace especially relates to God, to people, and to circumstances. Most important is peace with God. And in relation to God, the key is surrender. If, you, if you're taking notes, right, right in there with A, that, that's what you do in relation to God, is surrender. That's how you have peace with God. You don't go to a um, table and, and hash it out with him. <laughs> it's just you say, Lord, whatever, whatever you, you have. Uh, making peace with God is so important. And unfortunately, many people will not do that. Uh, I mentioned earlier Romans 5.1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The way we're justified by faith is by putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel. Uh, James gives some of the terms in James chapter 4 when he talks about submitting ourselves to God, uh, drawing nigh to God, humbling ourselves in the sight of the Lord. That's James 4 and several verses there. One that I probably missed out on is uh, cleansing our, our hands. Uh, but just this, this submission to the Lord, drawing nigh to him and, and submitting ourselves to him. It's important that we have peace with God and that we have the peace of God. In relation to people, we need to seek peace. Again, if you're taking notes, that's, that's the word to write in there. Seek it. Um, bunch of verses. 1 Peter uh, 3 and, and verse 11. Let him eschew evil. The word eschew means turn away from. Turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. <laughs> ensue means pursue. You know, God wants us to seek peace. Um, you've probably known people who seek trouble. <laughs> you know, uh, have different names for them, rat bag, uh, you know, various, various things. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, but uh, we need to, to seek uh, God's peace with, uh, with other people. I'm losing my place here. N not seek vengeance. You know, the world really kind of honors vengeance, many cultures especially. Uh, you know, if you... Uh, like one tribe, when the, the missionary shared about Ju Judas, oh, they thought, he's the hero. He's the main, he's the main man in the Bible. He got vengeance. Um, and as Christians, we can be, be caught up in that if we're not careful. Romans chapter 12, and verses 18 and 19, he says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 5, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Our, our attitude with others needs to be that we, we seek peace. Uh, we try to be the peacemaker. At least we don't um, make it worse or seek vengeance. And then in uh, circumstances and, and just in, in general, Colossians chapter 3 and, and verse 15, he, he basically says, let, let peace rule. Colossians 3 verse 15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. That word rule means to be the umpire. <laughs> God's peace needs to decide whether we're right or wrong whether we're going the right way or not. Um, let peace rule. There, there's a, a verse in Psalm, it's Psalm 4.8, that I, I, in my notes I've put, this is a good barometer, maybe a thermometer you could use. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. It's Psalm 4, verse 8. That, that's a pretty good barometer whether peace is ruling in your life or not. It's when you lay your head on your pillow, and what thoughts are going through your head. <laughs> uh, it's important we turn those over to the Lord. The only way you can stop thinking about something is to think about something else. And it's important for us to think about the Lord and let him give us his peace, the fruit of the Spirit. In 2 Timothy 2.22, or Hebrews 12.14, I'll say, um, he tells us to follow peace. Hebrews 12.14 says, follow peace with all men. The rest of the verse goes, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. 
peace and holiness. 2 Timothy uh, 2 and, and verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. God says we're to, we're to flee the, the wrong and we're to follow, we're to, we're to, to, uh, to seek out what God would, would have us to do. There's a verse in, in Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Uh, I mentioned it. There's a lot of verses about peace. We, we won't look at them all, but Romans 14, 19, he says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Now, I like that word things. You know, the, the things of your life. <laughs> God wants us to follow the, the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. It's Romans uh, 14, 19. Um, really, I think he's talking there about our attitude and our actions. And we need to be careful that we're not uh, against peace with others. And then Romans 8, 6, he tells us to be spiritually minded. And that relates to peace. Romans 8, 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. God wants us to have peace. It comes from him. And for us to have it, we're going to have to be spiritually minded. It's not going to be a physical thing. It's going to be a spiritual thing. And uh, the, the attitude that we need, uh, the, the psalmist wrote in Psalm 119, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Uh, that verse just boggles my mind. <laughs> and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Uh, that's the attitude that we need to have. And I think you see that in, in Philippians chapter 2 when it talks about, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The closer you get to God's word, the harder you'll be to offend. And if we get offended, the first thing we need to check is, what's wrong with me? Why am I offended? Why can't I have peace in this? Uh, and the actions we need are shown in Philippians 4. Uh, we mentioned one of the verses already. Uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he talks to us about our thoughts. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. There it is. The God of peace shall be, shall be with you. We need to keep our mind on him. Um, there, there's plenty of trouble in life. And there's, we could use lots of excuses for not having peace. But we're studying the fruit of the Spirit. And, uh, well, I, I pray about this a lot for me and, and for others as well. And uh, I remember hearing a, a guy talking about how he preached in some African country. He said, oh, man, it was rough. It was really rough. But he told him, he said, the fruit of the Spirit is available here, just like it is in wherever he was from. I can't remember now. Uh, you, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is available to us right here, right now. And in our situation, uh, we need to understand peace is not just the absence of trouble. Uh, you read about some of these people in Scripture, man, they had trouble. Jesus had trouble. I guarantee you he had peace. Uh, where it comes from, ultimately, it comes from the Lord. Uh, access to peace is only through the Lord. And, and the, the basis of peace, uh, th this is something for you to think about. The basis of peace is God's character. That's the bottom line. That's the foundation. It's God's character. And the source of peace is the Holy Spirit. So, man, those are, those are great things to, to count on. In Ephesians 2.14, it says, He is our peace. What a blessing that is. A couple more verses. One is Isaiah 48, verse 18. I'm, I'm just about done here. Isaiah comes before Jeremiah. 
Isaiah 48, 18. We, uh, we sing a song from this one, a chorus. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. God wants us to have peace. God wants to, uh, you know, to us. God wants to bless us in, in that way. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Uh, we need God's peace. We need to be saved. Uh, we also need to have that sense of direction and purpose and rest uh, in spite of people and, and circumstances. Uh, again, in Isaiah, Isaiah 26 and, and verse 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. I'd recommend you pick out a verse from some of these and, and memorize one or two of them. But that would be a good one. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You won't have to wander around feeling that panicky, lost feeling <laughs> in life. You'll have a direction in the peace of the Lord. Uh, I thought we'd quit with uh, a song from our hymnal, uh, page 470. Did we, did we get hymnals? I think.